Let's move on. Uh, let's do another theorem. Yeah, let's do another theorem here. Actually, I'll call this a lemma. Lemmas are words for tiny theorems. There's, we're, we'll go over this more later, it doesn't really matter, it's just vocab. Theorems in math are big facts that you prove. They're big facts that have been proven to be true. If they're not proven, they're called a conjecture. And conjecture is just, I think this is true. I'm conjecturing that's true, right? Um, so theorems are proven things and they're usually big and important. Lemmas are tiny little proofs that help us solve the big proof. So lemmas you should normally do before theorems. And then propositions or corollaries are things that happen after a theorem that you directly use a theorem to do. So like once you do a big theorem and then it's like, oh, the next thing's obvious, that next thing you call like a corollary, something like that. Anyway, yeah, so let's do a tiny lemma. This tiny lemma is that A, um, for integers a and b if a divides b then a will also divide negative b Yeah. And so the form way to write this would be for all A and Z and for all B and Z, A divides B implies A divides minus B. Now, now this is the direct translation of this, but I'm actually, sadly for now, it's going to change this to say A divides B if and only if A divides negative B, this actually goes both ways. So, and I think we can kind of see why, right? Like, like our side would be, I mean, think about it, right? Like uh, 10 divides 20 and 10 also divides negative 20. Why is it divide 20? Because two times 10 equals 20. Why is it divide negative 20? Because negative two times 10 equals negative 20. You just make the multiplier negative and you get the proof for free. Makes sense, right? Uh, professor, quick question. Yeah. It's, it's similar to the concept or exactly the same as the biconditionals? Oh, this is a biconditional. Yeah. So the one you showed was just to prove like how it works both ways. Wait, are you talking about the, the two and the, the, the 20 and the 10? Yeah, 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 just to say that um, doesn't matter if it's a positive or negative, it's under Z, which is integers because they have both positive and negatives. Yeah, 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 it's positive and negative, exactly. And um, my little example just kind of show how it works, but you're right, we're able to prove it both directions. The fact that the fact that you can make the multiplier negative, like make two negative, um, to get the 10 divides negative 20 is important, but also if you started with 10 divides negative 20, we get multipliers negative two, that's because negative two times 10 equals negative 20. But then if you make negative two negative, you get that two times 10 equals 20. So 10 divides 20. So yeah, it goes both ways. That's what, that's what we're gonna show right now. Proof. Um, yeah. So how do we start with proof?
let like a and we B. have to generalize there we go general that's a good way to say it right yeah exactly let a and b uh let a and b be arbitrary but particular elements of z such that a divides b and by the way i forgot something i got so excited about the arbitrary particular thing because this is a biconditional remember we have to have two separate proofs one proving it goes this way one proving it goes that way so I'm going to prove this way first. So you put a little thing there in parentheses, like this you, you should write in your homework and stuff. A little thing there in parentheses, and lets everyone know you're proving the first direction right now. You can put the second one first if you want, but then you just got to put the second direction, the, like the left arrow that way. Um, yeah. So let A and B be arbitrary for particular elements of Z, so that A divides B. I assume A divides B because I'm in this direction. I'm assuming this and proving this. So then... By definition, um, there is a K and Z such that the B equals AK. As always, that's what divides mean. It means there's an integer multiple, B is an integer multiple of A, for the integers K in this case. And then we're gonna do exactly what we did in the 1020 example, all right? Note, or yeah, so, so now we're gonna try to show that negative B, or yeah, that A, that, sorry, negative B is a multiple of A, right? Because that, that's what it means for A to divide negative B. That's what we wanna to get to. So I'm gonna start with negative B, and try to write it as multiple of A. So thus, negative B, which really means negative one times B, by definition, is going to equal negative one times AK. In this, we're substituting B for AK, or AK for B, so this is by substitution. And then by associativity here, right? Or actually by commutativity and associativity, this is gonna equal A times negative one times K. By commutativity and associativity. And that's all we need, right? So then note that since negative one and K are in Z, by definition, and the integers are close, under multiplication because we, because we know those two things negative one times k is in z therefore i, I like to end proofs with therefore it feels exciting to me therefore or ergo is a good word but anyway therefore um negative b which equals A times negative one K is divisible by A by definition of divisibility. Divisibility.
Oh, 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 we've got this important part. Ugh. The sweet release. There we go. I would have felt, that, that would have been a bottle up all day. I would have felt so weird. Any questions on that? Good. Yes, yeah, so this is nice and simple. And by the way, this is uh, the exact same way you'd prove that it's actually going to turn out that uh, A divides B will imply A divides B times C. Well, that's a conversation for a different day. Mainly because we're running out of time today, not because you guys couldn't do it today. 